Alright guys, welcome back to Logic Industries. We're uh, fixing to tear into a new CNC project here. So that starts the same way every time. I generate a setup sheet. It's got my tool list on it. And then also has my offsets, which I doubt you can read that, but my fixture offsets and other things like that to enter into the CNC machine. So what I gotta do is build up, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five tools to build up for this deal. So I got a collet chuck here for this thing that we made a while back. I got a collet chuck for this big ass drill bit. And then I got a collet for that kind of metal milling chuck there on the end. I'm gonna break it down, take that corner rounder out of it. That's just a straight collet goes down in it. And then inside the straight collet is a one of these AccuPro three fluid high performance aluminum cut it in mills. I'm gonna really uh, we're gonna really try to blast this material out of here to to speed up production on these parts. Oh, and then I've got a tapping head that uses quick change. I actually got I need two two different size taps for this project, but I only got the one tapping head, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of voodoo in the programming to uh, you know call the tool up out of one pocket but then use the offset from a different pocket so that we can have two different length tools that live in the same tool holder and uh, and I'll just call them we'll call it optional stop before we use that tool pop the one that's in it out pop the other tap in and go to town so that's what we got to do here I got to clamp my parts in place and break down these tools and build them up. So, but before we're going to be able to break our tools down and build this all up again, I got to do another one of those build a tool to make a tool to work on some tools kind of projects. See, I got my vise here, and by the way, after a couple of months of using this thing, I can confirm that it is a piece of shit. I do not care for it at all. Also, because of the vagaries of redneck finished concrete I happen to have a hole here you know a low spot in the concrete just exactly where my other locking caster is when the table's in the right place so no matter see that caster's locked <laughs> and it doesn't do a damn thing which is no bueno when you're trying to put the A-bomb torque on a tool holder here trying to break loose a, a collet from the nut or whatever so this doesn't work worth a shit <laughs> or you know at all so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to 86 my uh, shitty craftsman vice here or you know I'm not going to throw it away but I'm going to remove it put it back on the bench in the baseball sense of the word and I'm going to mount this directly to the bench but on this end here so that the torque doesn't spin it about the degree of freedom that it's got. Now, I don't want to bolt this right to my table because uh, I've also got my good tabletop over here. You can't, probably can't see it, but uh, so I want to replace it. I want to replace this tabletop and I don't want to just bolt this thing here to that and leave it out there all the time because it'll hook you and get in the way and I don't need it all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a kind of a duckbill outfit off of this. It's already got holes in it and everything to clamp it to the table like this here with a screw it on from the underside with a nut or something uh, to uh, clamp it you know sandwich it on the and not destroy the tabletop and not have to make any holes in the tabletop either I don't want to want to drill any extra holes in that brand new $150 maple block if I don't have to so <clears throat> that's what we're going to do now I'm going to go ahead and uh, break your camera down, move everything over to the mill and savage, scavenge me some aluminum and we're going to make the duck bill for this thing so I can build up my tool for the CNC. Well I got the groove there and uh, kind of forgot to turn the camera on <laughs> so I'm uh, squaring up my piece of metal here to make the first part. So 
that right there ought to uh, get us now square and to size. So I'll uh, break this down and set it up flat and bring it back. Well, I got her set up now. We're going to do the more complicated of the two because I kind of have an operating philosophy that if you're going to fuck one up, uh, better be the first one. That way you've got time to get over it <laughs> before you have to do it again. So anyway, these parts are both pretty simple. So I'm not anticipating any trouble. But, you know how that goes. So I'm going to come down on my stop and then I'm going to turn it on and touch off. There we are. My Z. I'm going to make these counter bores uh, 0.4 of an inch deep. I'm just going to crank the knee up 0.4 inches. And now we're going to make our counter bore. something like this which is a uh, it's one of these little cog things for a uh, cordless drill they are money well spent unless you're one of them hoity-toity sorts that's got a motor on the knee which case la di da I hold my tools with my pinky sticking out
to the 4364 screw bit. Fourth big, but uh, I don't have a 21 30 seconds, which is the right size, so we're going to use what we got. Maybe whack us a chamfer on there. Now we go back up with the knee. Son of a bitch. I bet you guys haven't seen a bit of that, have you? Well, we've come back up into the frame, so... A nice big chamfer on there, so it's easy to start. Alright, guys. Got my hole drilled out in the chamfer and I'm ready to tap it now. This is the uh, on-camera debut of the, my prototype uh, big boy tap guide. Uh, everybody's seen them little tap guides. You get them from Enco. They got the little little dingus. That they, they make about, I don't know, three pounds of force maybe to uh, you know push down into the tap. And they work pretty good for smaller stuff. But uh, you know, something this size especially if you got to use a crescent wrench with it because not everybody's got them big a-bomb size tap wrenches uh, they you, you sometimes it wants to wobble over because the spring doesn't have enough pressure to keep it square you know you pull on one side and it tips it over and you fight with it and you fight with it so i got tired of fighting with it and i come up with something here that's got a this thing makes about 40 pounds of force whenever you compress it all the way. It's got almost an inch of travel. And uh, it holds the big taps, and I've used this up to two inch uh, without any trouble, you know, tapping by hand with a crescent wrench. So, uh, anyway, that's how it works here. We're probably not going to get all the way down here because my tap handle is going to hit the stop over here on the side, but you can see how it works. I had it almost bottomed out there, sitting still. And you can see how far down it goes before we got to move it again. And uh, that's uh, about as far as I'm going to get. No, nope, I got a couple more cranks on it. Okay, now we've come out of the center, so there's our travel. You can see the, if the length of travel the thing's got. Works pretty well. I'm going to be, uh, we'll be making these in batches and uh, offering them for sale here next, I'd say probably about a month, maybe a little less, three weeks, something like that. But anyway, there's a big boy tap guy, and that's got our hole tapped through, got away with it. Now this piece is done, except for a little bit of deep burn. Anyway, I'll bring it back when I've uh, got something else to show you. Okay, it occurs to me, uh, now that I'm halfway through the project, that I forgot to uh, actually tell you how this was going to work. So, here's my tool holder clamp outfit, whatever the hell you want to call it. Here's the piece I just done, which turned out beautifully, by the way. So what I'm going to do here, you can see this piece I got here in the vise is the same width as this piece here. I'm going to deck this, I'm fixing to deck it off. I'm just going to run it off flat here, and then we'll drill it in two places for two fasteners, through here, three eighths fasteners, and then where this is going to be turned up in the vise like this, and we'll drill two holes here for this to go on there like that. And that'll make a kind of a duck bill outfit here and I'll run a there'll be a three-quarter bolt with a pad that I haven't made yet go through here and then that whole menagerie will then let it clamp onto the edge of the table so that's the plan anyway I got the bottom piece made 
I'm going to have this piece here done in about 10 minutes. Uh, probably won't uh, record any of that because it's just drilling and tapping holes. You've all seen that before. And then uh, I'll bring you back when we uh, set up on this thing here just because it might be kind of a crazy looking setup. And then there'll be some turning work to do. So hang on. Here we are with this uh, modifying. This is the only modification that's got to be done to the actual clamp. I'm going to drill me two holes up here and tap them. Uh, 3816. So this thing here has got a kind of a round shape here, and I didn't want to just clamp on it because it's got a split, you know, so that it'll clamp down. So what I've actually got is I got it on the bottom of the vise and against the fixed jaw, and then I've got a one, two, three block here so that this jaw is actually clamping on this surface against the fixed jaw in the back, and it's in there pretty solid. So I've just got to drill a couple of holes. I think it'll be all right. So let's do that, shall we? I went ahead and found center on this thing and uh, now I'm going to go 875 on either side of it for my bolt spread. Ain't none of this super critical, it's just for a faster. Now I probably should have dowel pinned it and all that other crap, but I mean, this is just an outfit to clamp to the side of the table so I can change CNC tools. I don't think it really needs. That's one of the keys whenever you get older and do a little experience in the machine shop is learning when to let go. When's, when good enough is good enough, instead of spending three hours doing something you can do in 20 minutes. So anyway, there's our holes, and now we'll uh, chamfer and uh, tap these. In fact, I might power tap them. I think that's what I'll do. blind holes and uh, I don't need to go quite to the bottom of them anyway so I'm just going to run them down in their ways and uh, go pretty slow so I don't break a tap off that would be a great tragedy so here we go Pretty close to bottom. I'll just let a. Uh, I'll run it back in by hand after we're done here to make sure I don't. I just don't want to bottom that out while it's running uh, under power. And I'm pretty sure it would slip, but the one time it don't slip is the time is this one right here where it'll explode and leave me little shards of tool steel stuck in my part. And 
an area tapped hole in sight. Yeah. 